Enigmatic E. Hey, what's up everybody? Today we're gonna be messing around with Gen 2, specifically its new motion brush. I've been seeing some stuff on Twitter that just looks very cool. And yeah, I spent some money to get some credits so that you don't have to. You can see how this works and I'm gonna be experimenting so you don't lose your credits, I'll lose mine for you. So I do wanna warn you, this is my first time using it, so I'm probably gonna stumble a little bit, but I do promise at some point I will get it right and have something good, hopefully. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. So I am in here already, let's go to start image. Let me try this image right here. This guy made out of water and it's just like splashing. So yeah, we can brush some of this water and see what happens. Brush all of this here. This is like movement. If I wanted to move a vertically, horizontal proximity, I'm guessing is like zooming in. Like we'll see what it does. Um, but there is like this thing here, like a camera motion. You get the speed here as well. So let's try to go a little bit faster. I'm gonna try zoom out. I'm gonna save image plus description. Man made of water splashing. Okay. So we got four seconds. Let's see what it does. It looks like he's like a balloon that's shrinking or something. How about we do try zooming in and increase the speed a little bit. Uh, I think zooming in is a, actually a little bit cooler and I did it faster too. I am curious what it'll do with something like this though. In this case, I want the background to move, right? Cause car, there's no point in having the car move. Maybe the background. Let's see if this, if this actually makes sense. Horizontal. I want it to go really fast. So it's like a car, futuristic city. All right, moment of truth, let's check it out. Okay, okay, that looks pretty cool, man. Like the unfocused background, it looks super convincing. The car just doesn't look right. All right, I, I'm so dumb. I figured out how this works. So apparently this is just for the movement of the camera and everything together. If you don't want everything to move, you definitely don't wanna select any of these parameters. So for the paintbrush and, and for the things that you want to be affected by the paintbrush, these are the parameters you wanna pay attention to. Horizontal, vertical, and proximity. All right, so let's see what this did here. Okay, uh, it looks better than what I was getting before, but it, it is warping. You know what I do wish they had, and I maybe they'll do this in the future, but I wish there was like two paintbrushes with two different parameters. Like if I can have one paintbrush to paint the car and then another paintbrush to paint the background and have them going in opposite directions, then you would really sell that movement that's happening. I don't know if you've ever seen like those visual comics where there's like subtle movements happening, voice acted and music and all that, but it's just like comic book uh, panels. And then you see like a subtle movement and it kind of, you know, breathes a little bit of life to the, to the panels. I think this would be amazing for that. I went back to this one and yeah, it's giving me way better results now. As you can see, this is this is really what I was kind of going for at the beginning, and it definitely improved. But yeah, this is a really cool tool. Like again, you just have to know where to use it. It can't be used for like every case, but I think it's still a very cool tool. Let's see if we just move this guy's head. What would happen? So I wanted to move horizontally, maybe kind of going like like this or something. I don't know. All right, so let's see what it does with this. Ah. Is the number, the amount that it's actually moving? I do wonder, maybe I, maybe the number is too high. I kind of wish I could make him move his head to the left and then to the right or something, kind of like looking left and right. But I guess maybe in the future there, there will be parameters like that. But again, th I don't think this was meant for something like this. I think this is meant for like those images where you see like clouds moving or you see like a fire. Maybe at some point they'll start to think of stuff like this, but right now they're just thinking more of like, how can we bring a photograph to life? I reduced the number. Okay, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, it's not convincing. I mean, I would say that the hand is really convincing. The hand looks really like it's, re it really looks like it's dragging its hand, but the head, you know, you start to see it kind of warp a little bit. It does retain a lot of things. I think the subtle movement makes it a little bit more convincing than how I was doing it before. So now let's experiment with stuff that I know uh, this was meant for and what I think will likely work much better. Uh, let's try something like this and uh, let me put some brushes here. I've been experimenting a little bit so I kind of get the idea of how this works now. I mean, somewhat. So we're gonna get some of this smoke. We're gonna get some of this fire. So this, I think this is really where this paint tool really shines. 
And uh, we're, this one, we're going to go vertically. So this is probably going to give us way, way better results than what I've been experimenting with. Yeah, this is this is what it's meant for. This kind of thing is what it's meant for. I think it's cool. All right, going to try a few other ones. This is probably going to look really good. Oh, you got some smoke right here. I think now we're going to start to see really cool things. Okay, that's pretty sick. That one's download worthy. Okay, let's try a few more. Now that I know kind of how this works, I'm getting way more interesting results now because of that. Look at this. Oh, uh, yeah, one of my favorites so far. Yeah, it's very cool. This is kind of the, the, the goal is to try to get something that's just kind of out of the box and it's not just like clouds moving. I do wonder how it handles anime images because it seems to be doing really well with realistic looking images. So let me try this. Let's get this flame here. I'm very curious. And then we also want it to move up slightly. Okay, anime style moving flames generate. It's not really that great. I think it's trying too hard to do it like realistic. And so it's kind of conflicting. Maybe it's just taking over too much and I just need to make these a lot, a lot smaller. This is a little bit better. I would say you can't overuse the paintbrush because I, th I think there's also like probably a little bit of um, feathering that's happening as well. So if you do uh, take up too much of the of the space on the on the image, then it starts to also warp other things that you do not select. I just don't like what's happening here. It's not doing it for me. So okay, you know I I, I think if we can get something like this to work, that would be pretty cool. But unfortunately, this doesn't seem to work so well. I just feel like for now, more realistic looking images is what's working best. I could be wrong though, so if you have any examples, definitely share one with me so I can check them out. All right, so yeah, that's Gen 2's motion brush. Um, I had fun experimenting with it and seeing what its limitations are and what its uses could be. And definitely it's amazing when it comes to like still images where you want water to move or you want clouds to move or possibly like hair, waving hair. There's definitely uses there where it really shines. It does make me excited for the future and what the possibilities could be. So yeah, if you're interested in checking it out, hopefully this video was useful for you to kind of get an idea of how it works and whether it's something that would be useful for you or not. And uh, yeah, that's it for today. And till next time, like always, take care, God bless. Peace.